It's a city where anything can happen. So what could go wrong or right as I hit up LA unscripted from the Two Bit Circus in downtown LA. escape rooms, classic carnival games, plus a virtual arena and an amazing arcade sure to cause more than just Pac-Man fever. Let the games begin. Hi everyone, I'm Dana Devon and shh, don't tell my bosses at KTLA, but I went way off script today to join LA's Two Bit Circus. My name is Brent Bushnell, co-founder of 2-Bit Circus, and I'm revealing the world's first micro amusement park located in downtown Los Angeles. Popcorn. Cheer. We just made up the term a micro amusement park, and the idea is, you know, small compared to an amusement park, but still huge for an entertainment complex. And then, like a carnival, like an amusement park, lots of different things that you can do all over. So the story rooms, you know, our game show, the carnival midway, the arcade, the VR, lots of different zones. Brent and I are really inspired by a couple of different classic forms of entertainment. Classic video games, classic uh, carnival games, and technology. And we re really wanted to marry all those things together and create experiences like no one has ever had before that, that bring those pieces together. Good. Good. My co-founder Eric and I are both engineers. Uh, we started collaborating, making interactive art that we could take to parties, and then the art turned into games, and you know, all of a sudden we were doing huge events for Amazon and Intel and uh, you know, as this traveling nerd circus. We're both trained clowns. In addition to doing all those big events, we finally said, let's do our own event. So we took over this huge building, 50,000 square feet in the arts district, uh, and started filling it with all of our stuff, uh, you know, stuff that friends of ours had made, and uh, you know, just got collecting more and more fun things until we opened in 2018. A lot of these things are one-off. They are, this is the only place they exist on planet Earth. Uh, you know, either we made it from soup to nuts or friends of ours, we worked with them to adapt their stuff for public. The Carnival Midway is all about social play, multiplayer games. We have these big track balls, and those are actually the balls that a, that a clown will walk on in the circus. So we have a lot of multiplayer virtual reality. Hyperdeck, this is a four-player virtual reality experience, but there's wind that blows your hair back, the, the floor vibrates. So many of the games here at 2-Bit Circus are designed to get you playing with other people. Now, today, that's a tightrope wire we have to we have to walk carefully with the pandemic, with all the new regulations, but this is a big place. People can play comfortably and safely here. Lots of people have bars, but you know what? Drinks are better when a robot makes it for you. We've got a robot bartender that can grab the alcohol off the Ferris wheel of booze, mix it, shake it, and present it to a human. We got a nice big parking lot and turned it into seating and uh, you know we got some bistro lights up there. We did the game show out, outdoors. We do that once a month. And to be here in downtown in such a special place, the Arts District, it is such a fantastic place to be and such a fantastic time to be here. Also under the big top, the Boxcar Cafe serves up all the usual theme park faves, plus vegan bites and sweet treats. Score! Okay, while I check out some of the high-tech 2-bit original games, let's check in with our Jasmine Simpkins. I think we're trying to be uh, an introduction to immersive theater for people that might not even know that that's a thing that exists in this world. We had a space in New York actually before this called Dream Machine and it was all about dreams and it was you know more Instagram photo heavy. So we were trying to think okay what's retro and what has a lot of doors that can open up to weird things and yeah. we came up with Madcap Motel. Madcap means wacky and weird. Um, a little spooked out. What am I going to see? I don't know. We were kind of nervous people would think we were a real motel. We came up with this portal to elsewhere and how was the portal discovered? And so then we built out, okay, who owned the motel? What's the backstory of the motel? And J.P. Sando was born. I'm J.P. Sando, owner of this fine establishment. March 11th of 2020. Of last year is when we went to launch, and we all know what happened March 12th of 2020. 
I think being back in this like 1960s Americana retroness is just like a happy coincidence. What's really great is right now Mid-Century Modern is in again. So the space is a mix of new and old and I think that helps make things feel authentic. Elsewhere appeared to Mr. Sando when he was in his most distressed state. There is a lot of training and things that go into it. It's now 50 actors that are all trained, all know each role. I got a postcard. Yes, and it looks just like that one. I wanted to be in a artsy part of LA. I wanted to be in a place that felt like you could not only come to us, but when you walked outside and went to each bar and restaurant or gallery around us, it felt like a cohesive Friday night outing in downtown. We have luckily been sold out for the last three weekends, so it's been pretty popular. And people of all ages. It was really cool to see every age. It hits home and it has heart and feeling, and I think that that's what's connecting with so many people. I'm really lucky to be able to call this my job, but when I actually think about what my job is and like the people and the family that we've built here, I'm really lucky. Okay, make sure to make reservations before visiting. There is so much to do in our city, I love it. And more two-bit fun from the Mateo Street Circus. We'll be right back. We have these big track balls, and those are actually the balls that a, that a clown will walk on in the circus. And Eric had one, he, and we were like, hey, what if we turn this into a track ball? So we mounted it on casters, we put a little mouse underneath it, and all of a sudden you have this huge track ball. Uh, and so we've made tons of different games with that. Uh, and now we have this, you know, kind of king of the hill, four of them, uh, as a carnival midway game. days to date nights, everyone who joins the 2-Bit Circus is guaranteed to have a three-ring good time. Welcome back to LA Unscripted, everyone. I'm Dana Devon, and this high-tech arcade carnival is definitely not clowning around when it comes to virtual reality. Whoa, oh my god, it's so cool. But we also have story rooms. That is my favorite. No one's done a story room before, because we invented it. A story room is a room that you and five people will go in as a group. It can be anywhere from a group of four to six or so. And it's a little bit like walking into the episode of a television show. You get to inhabit a character. You're taken on a narrative arc from knowing nothing about what you're doing to being a total expert and also laughing like crazy by the end of it. And now our Olivia de Bortoli has this from our sponsors. There is nothing virtual about this. We are taking to the streets for a good cause with the Skid Row Running Club. The Skid Row Running Club was founded 10 years ago, right here at the Midnight Mission. We are a program for people who are experiencing homelessness and addiction and are in the process of rebuilding their lives. We are a community of people who support one another. We do that by running and establishing very deep friendships and relationships. I was invited down to the Midnight Mission by a gentleman by the name of Roderick Brown. He was in recovery here. He had just been paroled from prison. I was the judge who sent him to prison, okay? But he, for some reason, decided he liked me and asked me to come down here. And when the president of the mission asked if there was something I could do to contribute to their program, I knew how beneficial running was to my own physical and mental health and it made sense to me to offer such a program to people in recovery. Every year we do the LA Marathon and every year we do an international marathon. This coming January, January 4th, 55 of these runners from Skid Row will be traveling to run the Egyptian Marathon in Luxor. 
I found like a new purpose. You know, my, my, my primary purpose is to stay sober and help other people achieve sobriety. And um, it's common for people in recovery to relapse. And so we've gotten a couple calls in the middle of the night. Hey, I've relapsed. I'm scared. I don't want to do this anymore. Being part of this club, we go and help help our, our, our members out. Herbalife Nutrition is a global health and wellness company. We're basically putting on a triathlon in Los Angeles. So on uh, October 24th in downtown LA, we have our Herbalife 24 Triathlon Los Angeles, which includes a 22 mile bike ride, a 5K and Olympic distance uh, uh, triathlon and a sprint distance triathlon. Super excited to have the Los Angeles Skid Row runners participate in the triathlon and we'll be cheering them on. A lot of people who, you know, after they get their act together, can distance themselves from drug and alcohol use, are back being productive members of the community. And, and that's a, a great accomplishment. I did my best, but I'll leave the running to the professionals. This is the time of the year when major tech companies release their biggest products of the season. The iPhone 13 is now on sale, but there are plenty of other gadgets coming soon. Let's start with Facebook. The company recently unveiled two new versions of its Portal video chat device. Portal Go is $200 and does exactly what its name implies. It lets you bring it from room to room so you can video chat anywhere in the house. The device sits on a charging dock so it's always ready to go and it doubles as a portable speaker with compatibility with popular music apps. Portal Plus is $350 and has a big 14 inch screen which lets you see up to 25 people on the display at once. Roku has new streaming sticks that the company says have better Wi-Fi connections built in. The Roku streaming stick 4K is $50. The 4K Plus is $70. It adds a rechargeable, hands-free voice remote. You can say, hey Roku, find my remote when it's lost. For current Roku owners, you'll get a new software update soon that makes it easier to access free live TV and to use your voice for commands. And when it comes to the most popular e-reader, Amazon has some updates for its Kindle Paperwhite models. The devices now finally support USB-C charging. The Kindle Paperwhite has a bigger screen and faster page turns and longer battery life. It can now go up to 10 weeks between charges. It's also waterproof and sells for $140. Step up to the Signature Edition to add wireless charging more storage, and a sensor that automatically adjusts the backlight. A new kid's paper white Kindle comes with a year of free access to thousands of books, a two-year worry-free guarantee, and a kid-friendly case. It sells for $160. I love reading books on my Kindle, but here's a pro tip. Download a free app called Libby. It lets you check out free eBooks from your local library, and you can read them right on your Kindle. All right, I've got links to that app and everything I mentioned here on my website. Just go to richontech.tv. And I have not forgotten about the iPhone 13. I'm currently testing it. I'll have my full review very soon. I'm Rich Demuro, and you are Tech Smart. LA Inscripted from the 2-Bit Circus will be right back after this. Ugh. So many of the games here at 2-Bit Circus are designed to get you playing with other people. We want to get you playing, drinking, meeting other people. Now, today, that's a tricky, that's a tightrope wire we have, to, we have to walk carefully with the pandemic, with all the new regulations, but this is a big place and it fits lots of people and people can play comfortably and safely here. plus square feet of cutting edge video game fun. Welcome back to LA Inscripted from LA's 2-Bit Circus. We are now in the midway and what better place to test my ski ball skills. Okay, let's check it out. Ready? Okay, that didn't go so well. Oh, robbed. I'm on fire, not really. 
But you know what else is hot? Traditionally, they're a breakfast food, but at the Dalai Lama, you can make a waffle into whatever you want it to be. Hi, I'm Christy and Dana. I dare you to come be a waffle master at the Dalai Lama. The waffles are basically like a staple of the ice cream here. So we have our Belgian OG Liège waffle and we have our Hong Kong style bubble waffle. Not only is it like so beautiful and it's like so Instagram worthy, but it's also really, really, really delicious. Our two owners, we have Eric Shomoff and Sam Baru. And Sam, he grew up in the south of France and there was a llama farm super close to him. There was a llama named Dolly and he just loved her. So he took that image back with him and he and Eric both just have like a love for food. He actually sent two of his France-based chefs over to Belgium because he really wanted it to be an authentic recipe. Okay, so I have my shirt, I have my gloves, I have my expert. Okay, what are we doing today? Okay, so first thing, we're gonna make our version of an ice cream cone, which is the bubble waffle. The bubble waffle, it's more of like a fluffy pancake texture, whereas the Belgian waffle is like thicker, it's a bit richer. I didn't realize that the bubble waffle was the number one street food in like Hong Kong. But oh my God, look what a golden brown, delicious, look at that. Look how perfect the bubbles are. So now we're gonna pick our ice cream flavor. Cookie Monster! Cookie Monster! The Cookie Monster ice cream is vanilla base, it's Oreo crumbs, and it's cookie dough. But we also have like ube, we have matcha green tea, we have horchata, and we're known for our really fun flavors. Cream, now you can pick whatever toppings you want. Okay, basically I'm a five-year-old, so anything a five-year-old would want. We also offer an OG box, which has really blown up on all of our to-go apps, like Postmates and DoorDash, um, because it's perfect. It's like a family-style waffle meal, basically. You can get a six-piece or a 12-piece, and then you can add as many toppings as you want on the side. Okay, so it's the final exam of the Waffle Master, and that is trying our creation. Mm. Oh my God, that's so good. People come in and they come with their families one day, they come with their date the next. Like it's just a really fun environment for everyone. Okay, so I have an idea. Yeah. This creation should be called the Dana Llama. I think that's brilliant. The Dana Llama. Matter of fact, I think we should change the whole shop to the Dana Llama. Retro today, I'm doing a beef stroganoff. Cut this into bite size. I'm gonna get my cast iron skillet going on like a medium high heat. Cause I'm gonna cut off, if there's any real fatty bits, I'm gonna get rid of that. This is a clean hand, so I'm gonna hit it with some salt. Now my cast iron skillet is you want it to be hot, because you want to get a good sear on the meat. You want it to get nice and brown. And you don't want to crowd your pan. Make sure everything has room. Egg noodles. This is your classic stroganoff, the wide egg noodles. So first, I'm going to take my steak bites out. They're nice and brown. And we'll get a half an onion in there. Onion going in, and then season every layer. So salt, olive oil, and about a medium heat. And look how they pick up all the brown from the steak. And we're gonna cut up our mushrooms. So these are going in with my onions. And keep adding more oil if you need them. Mushrooms soak everything up, so if you need a little more olive oil. Our mushrooms are just about cooked. I'm gonna chop up two to three cloves of garlic. Garlic in, big pinch of salt in. You wanna flavor your water. And these cook quick. These are five to six minutes. So in those go. I'm gonna add some flour because I'm gonna to wanna to thicken the sauce. So pour some flour. And we're gonna wanna cook out the raw flour taste, so stir that around. To that, some beef stock broth. To flavor our sauce, a little Dijon. I would say a teaspoon. And some Worcestershire. 
just to give it all this deep kind of flavor. A couple of glugs of that, and I'm gonna add the sour cream. I'm going to do a good amount. Steak back in. Pasta's done right into my pan. I'm gonna let everything just come together for like a minute. We're done. It is official. Joining the circus was an excellent choice. You should try it. Thank you so much to 2 for letting LAU play. It is now game over for us until tomorrow. But me, I'm gonna go work on my high score. We'll see you next time. Mwah. Ha, ha, ha.